Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the north, more specifically Alton, Illinois. And there's many wonderful things here in Alton, but the thing that fascinated me and the reason I came here was to learn more about one man that I am truly fascinated with, and that is this man right here, Robert Wadlow. The man, the myth, the legend, the tallest man to ever live at eight foot 11 inches. Now, if you watch my videos regularly, you may have seen Robert Wadlow in every single Ripley's slash Guinness World Records museum in existence. But I wanted to, to travel here to his hometown to get a better feeling of who the man himself was. To give some context, they actually made a statue of his chair as well. You have to be a great man when they erect a statue to your lazy boy. All right, let's see. <laughs> Pretty comfy. I'm lying, it's not. Now, Robert Wadlow lived a amazing but very, very short life, dying at the age of 22, and he never, ever stopped growing. He had, you know, a disorder obviously with, with his glands and whatnot that just kept him growing until right before his death, he reached eight foot 11, officially beating the previous record. And uh, there never will be another Robert Wadlow because these days when people have these disorders, they're easily treatable. So we'll never see someone who will perpetually grow. Just think about that. He made it to eight foot 11. If he was alive today, he'd be 100 years old and over 40 feet tall. This is actually the home place of Robert Wadlow. This is the house he was born in. Pretty small house for such a massive man. I don't even know if he would fit in there. Now, a mighty man like Wadlow was taken down by something very small. He had a blister on his foot, and because of his long limbs and large body, he had very poor circulation. Therefore, he didn't have a lot of feeling in his extremities, and the blister became infected and pooled up blood in his foot without him ever feeling any pain. And sadly, the infection set in, and Wadlow left us. All right, to see what we can learn about Mr. Wadlow here in his hometown, we are gonna check out the Alton Museum of History and Art. Ooh, that's how we start out. One of Wadlow's shoes. They're not, the river was a lot more shallow back then, so they didn't even bottom out. He was only an eight pound, eight ounce baby, which was what I weighed when yeah. I was born. But I didn't quite make it to nine feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Um, this was him at five years old, that's him at nine. He was only seven foot two when he joined the Boy Scouts. Oh wow, <laughs> so at nine he was taller than an average man. Oh yeah. Uh, Robert, of course, was a Malayan who later became a Mason. This is his Masonic ring. If you look at it, there's a half dollar in that ring. Oh wow. In the center of it. Half dollar. Like That's attached to his hand. You see his hand a little bit larger than mine. And ring a little bit bigger. Yeah, apparently he had the largest hands ever. And this was his height when he joined the Boy Scouts. <laughs> a picture of him with his scout master and another scout the same age. Oh wow! He was seven foot two at that time. <clears throat> this was his height when he uh, graduated from Alton High School in 1936. He was only eight foot three at that time. <clears throat> this is some of his shoes. These are size 37. He actually wore a size 44 towards the end. We don't have any of those, but we do have several of the 37s. Oh, wow. So these are all, all his shoes? And those are all his shoes. They took one of his shoes one time. He worked for the International Shoe Company, and they filled it full of dimes. Mm -hmm. And if you could guess how many dimes <laughs> is in there, of course, you got that much money. How many dimes do you think went in there? Oh, I have, I have no idea. 6,250. 6,000 dimes. This was his third grade school desk. As you can see, it's up on wooden blocks. This picture here demonstrates why. And it's him with another third grader. 
they had to put it up on blocks because his oh. uncle hit the desk. You know, he was already the size of an adult. That's that picture's so sad. He's <laughs> oh. uh, mock-ups of the clay that were made for the statues across the street. Obviously, the one they chose is the one on the end. There's kind of a mystery about them. We're kind of lucky. Normally, those clay mock-ups, you know, are made to last for 30 days yeah. and then they fall apart. Those are over 30 years old and still in pretty good shape. Wow. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. Is this a Cabbage Patch Wadlow right there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't see very many of those. No. <laughs> well, it's not any taller than a normal <laughs> Cabbage Patch kid. Everything in Robert's life was affected by his size. A good example is that fountain pen in the foreground is one that I might use, and one in the background is one that was specially so made for a, a large pen for his big hands. Huge hands. That's his cap and gown when he graduated from Mountain High School. In 1936, uh, there's 14 yards of material in that wow. cap and gown. That's a picture of his graduating class and Robert in the back. For some <laughs> he reason, he always had Robert in the back. I don't know why. sticks out that. there. As if he ate a meal, the dinner weren't so worthy he might use. Would be adequate for someone of my size, but for someone with hands like him and nine feet tall, it'd become a problem. If he sat in a chair, it would be adequate for the average person, but for him, being nine feet tall, it got to be a problem. What was this? His, I guess that's his pocket knife. That's his pocket knife, his bracelet, his camera. He was a member of the camera club. He tried to live a normal life as you know, as someone yeah. nine foot tall could lead. Is that a billy club? Mm-hmm. That ring was actually belonged to another giant that toured with him. He toured with the Barnum and Bailey Circus, yeah. as I understand it, for a short period of time. And that was given to him by another fellow that was really tall. As I understand the story, if, if I heard the story right, the fellow that gave him that ring was another fairly tall person. He was like seven foot nine. He was billed as a short guy. And you normally don't think of somebody <laughs> seven nine as short, but in this case, I guess he was. Did he play guitar? Yes, he did. Huh. Did not know that. Matter of fact, here. That, that's a dental impression that was taken of his uh, mouth. Hmm. I have heard about it, but I don't know what it is. Ooh. <laughs> This is like my favorite. I can throw together my anthropology so, knowledge. So what, my what is that? Uh, it is a legend. Um, so basically in 1673, whenever Marquet and Juliet came through the area, um, they found two basically paintings on the bluffs. Um, and basically what these paintings were of, it was like this green creature. It's like a lime green, I'd say. And that's where the Paisal bird lives. So it's this giant, massive thing. Really? And so growing up, of course, you know, my mother, uh, most parents wanting to scare their children, it's like, if you're not good, the Paisal bird's gonna come get you. <laughs> so every time we'd drive by it going to Grafton, I'd be like in the floorboard, like half crying, like, yeah. mom, please don't do this to me. Oh, we got some more Paisal bird yes. over here. Yes. Uh, everything in this hallway is uh, different artists' renditions of it. Um, personally, my favorite is right behind you. Oh wow. That one's my personal favorite. So what happened to the original painting, or the original? Sadly, they have since been blown up. Blown up? That's, I mean, they've been lost to history. I couldn't tell you where, like, the original two paintings were. But there, there you said that there's a replica? Yes, it's, you can't miss it. I'll have to go check that out. Oh yeah, it's, um, it's basically just kind of, as you're going to graft it. This is, a, this is a, a, a small piece of the original painting? That's a small piece of the second original. The uh, one that Marquette and Joliet sound was destroyed in 1920. This one was destroyed in 1961. Okay. Our department actually is the high sure still do, yeah. Wow. It's definitely... a headless chicken right there. Is this is uh, a gravestone? Yes. This is William and Noel Moore were killed by the Indians. There's some locks of hair that were actually originally placed in this portrait right here. The Arbuckle locks of hair. That's an encrypted code. It's not like just a beautiful quilt. It's an encrypted code. We had a legend for it there. For instance, if it's hanging out of line and you see the butterfly facing down, mm -hmm. that tells you that somebody's watching. It's not a safe place to go. If the butterfly is facing up, then it's safe. It also tells you where the next safe houses are. 
Would this be used in like the Underground Railroad? This is for the Underground Railroad. Oh, wow. Railroad. This building was part of the Underground Railroad. Now that's pretty cool. You go to learn about one amazing figure, Robert Wadlow, and you find out about all sorts of other cool things, including the Pisaw Bird. Learned about a new cryptid today. In fact, they said that there is a recreation of the Pisaw painting. Let's go find that. Basically what they were telling me, the Pisaw was a feared Native American creature. Uh, Native Americans were terrified of it, and then white people became terrified of it when they found several murals of this terrifying bird uh, painted on mountainsides. And those murals are now gone for various reasons. They've been destroyed. Um, but there's been an effort to preserve the legend of the Pisaw bird. And people have put up several other murals of this terrifying creature. Now this right here it's created in 1999 a commemorative version of the paisa bird it definitely does not look like some bird that you'd want to mess with here back behind the paisa bird is these amazing caves they are fenced off but it's really cool Okay, apparently some believe that those caves are actually the home of the actual breathing, living Pisaw bird. Guess that's why those fences are there. All right, so what a day. We learned all about the world's tallest man, the world's scariest bird, and everything in between. Appreciate you guys coming along for this journey. If you'd like to see other places I've been, please check in the description. There's an interactive map that'll show you all the places I've been, and you can make suggestions on where you feel I need to go. Also, if you'd like to contribute to the channel, there's a t-shirt shop. That link is in the description, and as well as a Patreon page. If you donate at least $3 a month, I'd be happy to send you postcards on my journey. But for now, this one's in the bag.